thank you, uh, Dr. Kuyumi. I think it was an excellent talk uh, outlining the principles of uh, effective uh, uh, teaching. Uh, and uh, I will continue. I'm, uh, my name is Theodor Grancharov. I'm uh, one of the <coughs> staff surgeons uh, at uh, uh, St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto, and uh, I'm the medical director of the Patient Simulation Center at St. Michael's Hospital. Um, I will uh, provide you with, uh, first of all, I have uh, uh, my disclosures. I've received uh, research grants and honoraria for speaking from uh, Covidian. I would, um, this is an uh, image uh, from, I, I, I understand this is not a very good uh, uh, picture. I took it in my, with my BlackBerry um, a couple of years ago uh, in our simulation center, and it was one of our PGY1 uh, just started residents doing a laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy. And uh, I did my best to uh, guide him through the procedure, uh, but you can see the results, half of the liver is on the, on the gallbladder, and I was thinking at that time, thank God we have uh, skill centers, uh, and this was not a patient. Um, I think all of uh, us in this room today will agree that uh, training outside the operating room is the optimal form for uh, basic skills training in, the, in minimally invasive surgery. In the past, uh, more than 10 years, we have seen a number of uh, publications validating uh, tools for uh, 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 training and assessment in uh, minimally invasive surgery. Most of these have uh, focused on uh, technical skills. However, we've seen very few formalized uh, training curricula in advanced uh, MIS that have been uh, implemented in uh, practice. We still, say, uh, we still see uh, quite limited assessment uh, and feedback in our uh, daily clinical uh, practice, although we have the tools. And I think that most of us here will agree that uh, although we've seen uh, significant developments in uh, research uh, knowledge, we've had difficulties implementing this uh, research knowledge into uh, clinical practice. And there are a number of obstacles for this implementation. Um, Leanne already went through the evidence on uh, transfer of skills from the, skills from the uh, simulated environment to the operating room. Um, and um, probably the first thing our administrators in the hospitals ask us, uh, does this work? It, uh, uh, we need more evidence to make sure that uh, this investment can be justified. Although I'm not aware of any randomized trials in the aviation industry, and we've seen significant um, uh, developments uh, for uh, in the past uh, more than uh, 40, 50 years. We have the issue with uh, work time restrictions and the issue of training versus service. Now within 80 hours our uh, residents have to provide uh, the same amount of service and uh, this may affect the time uh, reserved for training. There are a number of financial issues. Most of these simulators are expensive. Uh, the time for the faculty to teach uh, in the uh, simulate uh, in the uh, sim in the skills uh, centers is uh, limited, and uh, is always uh, uh, it can be a problem to uh, motivate uh, faculty members to uh, donate some of their time to teach their residents outside the operating room. At the same time, we know uh, uh, about all the issues about the increased uh, or efficiency and uh, patient safety. So when uh, we design a successful uh, uh, simulation uh, curriculum, uh, there, ha there are a number of principles that need to be uh, implemented. Uh, first of all, it has to uh, address all aspects of surgical competency. We've been focusing too much on uh, um, uh, technical skills only, and we know that surgical competency uh, includes uh, communication skills, cognitive knowledge, decision making, and all of this uh, have to be addressed uh, in, the, uh, in a successful uh, simulation curriculum. A successful curriculum needs to uh, include evidence-based tools. Uh, it uh, should um, allow time for uh, 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 effective assessment and feedback to create a base for deliberate practice, uh, and it has to be proficiency-based. There, uh, there is a trend now. Um, to move from a fixed time variable outcome uh, uh, training to a fixed outcome variable time. There is uh, currently a pilot uh, going on at the University of Toronto in the um, program, uh, uh, orthopedic surgery program, 
where three residents uh, um, will um, have the opportunity to complete their training within three years if they achieve the proficiency uh, criteria. Uh, and at the same time, we know that some of our, res uh, our, some of our residents uh, need more time uh, to learn uh, and achieve proficiency, and for them, maybe the, uh, the training will require more than uh, these three or five years. I'll go uh, briefly through the evidence-based uh, training tools. We all know them. These are simulated models, which include virtual reality simulators, box trainers, uh, live animals or animal tissues, full body simulation, and so on. Uh, there are a number of uh, assessment tools that have been uh, uh, designed and validated, and um, these include virtual reality simulators, global rating scales, procedure-specific checklists, motion analysis, and uh, every meeting we attend, uh, we uh, uh, are introduced to new methods for assessment that uh, are being validated or have been validated. Um, I will not uh, go through the evidence of uh, uh, the efficiency of virtuality simulation. Uh, Leanne already very nicely uh, provided an excellent uh, overview. We all know that uh, they are good tools for assessment of technical skills. Uh, we know that uh, skills acquired in a virtual reality uh, environment can be transferred to the operating room, and there are a number of curricula uh, utilizing virtual reality simulation for training in basic and advanced uh, laparoscopic skills. Box trainers are another um, uh, group of uh, uh, evidence-based uh, training tools. Uh, they are excellent uh, training tools. They allow us to use the same instruments we use in the operating room. They allow us realistic uh, tactile feeling. Uh, there are studies that have demonstrated that skills uh, acquired uh, on a back strainer can be uh, transferred to the operating room. Uh, uh, a minor downside is that assessment using uh, box trainers is, is, is difficult. It requires uh, um, a dedicated uh, evaluator uh, by the box trainer to uh, provide uh, assessment. And there is uh, probably the most validated and uh, widely used uh, curriculum, uh, the fundamentals of laparoscopic surgery, which also uses a uh, box trainer. Uh, <clears throat> there have been a number of discussions comparing box trainers versus vir virtual reality simulators or different uh, 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 virtual reality simulators, high fidelity versus low fidelity. This is a study we completed recently, and uh, it was presented uh, a couple of months ago at uh, ACS uh, accredited uh, educational um, institutions uh, consortium meeting in Chicago. Um, this were, we used uh, three groups of residents. Uh, one of them was a historic group of uh, controls, which uh, where they uh, learned uh, basically in the operating room. Uh, they were suturing the wrap of a Nissan in the operating room. Then we had two uh, groups um, randomized to either virtual reality training curriculum until they reached proficiency criteria or a box trainer curriculum with an uh, um, uh, experienced surgeon present until they reached the FLS proficiency criteria for laparoscopic suturing. Um, these are some of the results uh, in the operating room. You can see uh, clearly the learning curve of the control group, while uh, the two uh, uh, virtual reality or box trained uh, um, groups, they had already plateaued outside the operating room. So uh, they started at a totally different level and the difference was significant. This study, I think, indicates that uh, the learning curve can be efficiently transferred from the uh, operating room to the uh, skills lab and there is no uh, excuse not to implement uh, this form for curriculum in our training before the residents uh, are exposed to clinical training in the operating room. Um, in this study, we also uh, assessed the transfer effectiveness the, uh, ratio, which is something that's been used in the aviation industry, and usually the results there indicate that half uh, an hour on a simulator, uh, one hour in the simulator corresponds to a half an hour uh, training in the air. Uh, there was a study uh, a year ago by Agarwal on animal models which uh, demonstrated that tr the, the transfer efficiency ratio for a virtual reality simulation is uh, almost two, which uh, indicates that uh, uh, one hour on a, a simulator corresponds to two hour training in a clinical uh, environment. And this was uh, uh, also our findings. 
Um, so um, um, it is really a unique uh, uh, transfer effectiveness ratio and also supports uh, the argument why simulators should be introduced in uh, clinical training. I will uh, briefly go through the uh, evidence-based assessment tools that uh, should be incorporated in uh, training curricula. Um, one group are uh, um, um, vi uh, life or video-based uh, observation with criteria, and uh, these include procedure-specific checklists and global rating scales, and, then can be, and they can be used uh, on simulated models or in the operating room. Uh, the motion analysis, the Imperial College Surgical Assessment Device have been uh, thoroughly validated, multiple publications, and it provides uh, uh, objective assessment on, uh, uh, in uh, uh, the operating room or in the uh, simulated environment. And virtual reality simulators have been extensively validated as uh, tools for objective and reliable assessment of technical skills. Um, some of the uh, well-known global rating scales include uh, the OSADs, the goals uh, for uh, mainly technical skills and for non-technical skills, the NOTs, the NOTEX, the OTAVA uh, global rating scale. Some uh, um, well-validated procedure-specific checklists uh, allow us to uh, 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 evaluate uh, performance during a cholecystectomy, fund duplication, colorectal procedures, bypass, and uh, yesterday we uh, uh, so a newly designed and validated tool for incisional hernia repair from the group in McGill. This is uh, 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 the, uh, the OSATS uh, assessment uh, uh, sheet. Uh, we all know it includes uh, 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 seven uh, parameters and they're all assessed on a scale from one to five, wherein one is uh, poor performance and uh, uh, five is excellent performance. This is an example of the knots for non-technical skills uh, where there are f uh, f uh, four categories of, uh, of um, uh, assessment parameters, communication and teamwork, decision-making, situational awareness and leadership, and they're all uh, evaluated from one to four. It has been uh, validated in a number of studies. Uh, this is an example of procedures a specific checklist uh, for laparoscopic ruin white gastric bypass, and there are more and more procedures now uh, where um, these uh, procedure-specific checklists have been designed and validated. Motion analysis uh, has been around for almost 10 years, uh, and uh, I think the majority of us know the device. It includes a, s a signal generator and two sensors that are placed on the surgeon hands, and it provides analysis of time, number of movements, and path length. It's been ex extensively validated uh, by the group at Imperial College in uh, London, both on simulated models and in the operating room. Um, I think uh, it is important to underline that uh, assessment should be an uh, important part of any training curriculum. There is no uh, training without assessment and feedback, and we know that feedback uh, can improve performance in the operating room and can shorten the learning curve, and it, provo it, and it provides uh, opportunity for uh, uh, provides a basis for uh, deliberate practice. This is a study um, done by our group a couple of years ago where we uh, compared, it's a randomized trial where we compared a control group uh, uh, where residents performed two laparoscopic cholecystectomies one after the other without any feedback in between and a group uh, which uh, uh, was uh, evaluated and uh, they received feedback on their uh, 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 performance and how to improve their performance and there was clearly improvement in performance of the feedback group uh, compared to the control group. So um, we have all the evidence-based training tools to be incorporated in a, in a uh, comprehensive curriculum. The question is how to integrate them uh, into uh, this curriculum and how to implement it in practice. This is an example of a training curriculum in basic uh, laparoscopy, which uh, was introduced uh, in our institution a year ago. Um, all the new residents have to go uh, uh, through an evaluation, which includes uh, assessment of their theoretical knowledge and their technical skills. Afterwards, they go through introduction of the instruments, energy sources, and they receive uh, um, uh, some materials for theoretical pr uh, preparation, which includes information on anatomy, on procedures, and uh, uh, which is very important management of the complications after the uh, uh, procedure is done. 
Uh, then they go through a structured curriculum which includes uh, virtual reality simulation until they reach proficiency. They have to go through box trainer curriculum and, and uh, reach the, pro the proficiency criteria uh, from uh, FLS. They have to go through uh, instructional video library which we have created for uh, 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 most of the laparoscopic procedures. And then they have to observe or assist uh, for a minimum of five procedures. Once they've gone through this uh, curriculum, they uh, undergo a post-program uh, uh, evaluation, which includes multiple choice tests. It includes a technical skills test. Uh, they have to demonstrate that they can manage clinical uh, post-operative complication scenarios using the human uh, patient simulator, and it uh, uh, provides them opportunity to demonstrate their skills uh, working in a team. And then, um, if they uh, complete successfully all of these, uh, they start a supervised uh, uh, procedure in the operating room, which is video recorded, and afterwards they, rec they receive uh, assessment and structured feedback. Uh, if they complete this well, they receive a driving license for supervised training in, the, in basic laparoscopic procedures in the operating room. If they fail on any of these tests, they have to repeat the program or uh, some parts of the program. It's been a great success. We've been collecting data and hopefully soon we'll have some uh, um, um, more information on how this uh, um, uh, c curriculum uh, uh, has been implemented and what uh, the impact is on uh, uh, the speed and quality of skill acquisition in the operating room. So finally, I think uh, most of us will agree that uh, we have observed significant achievements in educational research in the past five, 10 years. We have the tools we need uh, in order to design, uh, to design a um, comprehensive curriculum. There have been uh, curricula that have been designed and the next step is to implement them in practice, uh, preferably through collaborative multi-center initiatives, which will allow standardization in the future. Thank you.